gospel reader of scripture this evening from Ephesians chapter 2. Paul right in the church in Ephesus. And we're going to talk about the, the three tenses. Past tense, present tense, future tense. But we're going to talk about making the most of today our concentrating on the present, which we have some control over. And of course, the Lord has given us that control. Um, but in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul spoke of all three tenses of past, present, and future. Verse 1 said, And you hath he quickened, or made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin. For in time past ye, plural, walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we, and Paul included himself, we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And more by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. We were all that, but look at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace. And his kindness toward us. Through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved. Through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift or the presence of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. All right, our text speaks to the Christian about the past, present, and future. I want to concentrate most of our time on the present. The first on the mention of the past and the future. Now we talk about the past, we want to, I can say, get over it. It's past. You're not going to change it. Anything you've done yesterday is history. It's already there. Uh, it, now let me, y'all hear me right, it's unchangeable but not unforgivable. And that's what we do is place those things under the blood of our lamb and uh, we go on with it. Now, miserable is a man who lives in the past. Now, you go out here to the nursing home if you want to find some people living in the past. And they tell you all about the past. But they don't know where they're at right now, currently. And I'm not knocking nursing homes because I think they're a good thing for a lot of people. They have no other place to go. And they got 24 hour care. Somebody's there around them all the time. But some people live in the past, they even the accomplishments of the past. These old sports, not now been a sports fan, I never was too good an athlete myself. I'm trying to play a little bit, but I warmed the beach. <laughs> Don't know what that is. But uh, uh, I see some of these guys that accomplished a whole lot. I saw Earl Campbell the other day, who was the best football player in my estimation ever was. I watched him play in high school. And then UT and then the Houston Oilers, and they, they traded him the last thing until the last year or so. But that 
they got to the beach and every now and then they'll have them on that Tyler station up there. Uh, and he lives in the accomplishments of the past, but he's a good guy. He's a Christian guy, Earl is. But what does God do with our past? If you look back at your paper a moment, look up there at verse 3. We've all had past, haven't we? Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, we were by nature the children of even as others. And then he tells us in verse 5, even when we're dead in sins, he God had quickened us together with Christ. And he said, by grace you're saved. I'm going to make this thing. God loves you whether you like it or not. <laughs> he watches over and protects you. Now, Linda and I was watching a new, one of the newsreels, that thing I spoke about Sunday. Hurricane Michael. They showed a lady being ushered to where her house used to be. And she, they showed her house like that and said, to God. careful when you do that. I knew a lawyer that lightning hit him on the lake out there when he, when he started hollering to God about matting in the rain. Cross lake. Killed him. But God loves us anyway. Y'all love yourself because God made you. I don't know if you ever thought about it or not. But God made us in his image, didn't he? On the other hand, when Jesus came into the world, he took on himself the form of a man. We were made in God's image. And then Jesus sent into the world and took on himself the likeness of a man. And he was a perfect man. But he still had the likeness of a man. But the worst thing is to reject that love. But God forgives the past. And the scripture says he remembers our sins against us no more. You, didn't, you can't, like an old dog, go bear something and dig it up. The Lord's not going to do that. He covered our sin finally and forever, didn't he? Yeah. We need to accept that forgiveness, don't we? Uh, the Apostle Paul, I've heard it said before of theologians that study the scripture, that Paul never did forgive himself for his life before he was a Christian because he continually gave testimony of how he persecuted the Christians. And it said Paul, even though God forgave him, Paul didn't forgive himself. And that, I gotta say that may be difficult to do, but that's what God wants you to do, isn't it? So the past is past. We're gonna put leave it there. And God's taking care of the future for us, isn't he? Did he say, I'll go and prepare a mansion for you? And if I go, I'm going to come back and receive into myself that where I am, you may be also. But he got a lot more to show us. You know, I think we all buried our loved ones somewhere in the line and, and friends, but particular loved ones. And I always think how good it would be to see them again. But the Lord got a whole lot more than just that reunion. Now, look at verse 7 again. We read a moment ago. Down past the middle of the pages. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. In the ages to come, okay, when the ages roll on, we're going to be with him. Because he made us eternal, didn't he? And he's going to give us an eternal body. But that spirit that he put in us is from God. 
So we're going to leave the future to God, aren't we? Even his coming again. Back in the early 70s, we used to go to church camp up in Box Springs, Arkansas. Uh, I took a bunch up there, uh, East Texas. Went to a little town up there called Grannis, Arkansas. A small town. You're going up, it's not far from the Oklahoma line. But one day, they, they were meeting in a house. The church was not have a prayer meeting like we have on Wednesday night. Said they had a house full of people. One of the old sisters there, the ladies, got a vision. She said, the Lord's coming. We're going to stay right here in this house. Well, they stayed. The next day got here. Nobody wanted to work. They, the next day, kids didn't go to school. And days began to pass. And they made the national news where the news came and news people then took the kids away from them and put them in school. But so and so lost their jobs. The guy didn't go. Ain't so and so and said we can't go. We got the Lord's coming. We used to pass that house there and talk about it. You know about they stayed there so long. But I won't tell you this much. The Lord's going to take care of when He's coming. Uh, it's going to be soon enough. It's going to be right on time. It's not going to be a day late. So we, we got no control over the future. We need to mold it as much as we can now for the future. And we're not going to change the past, so we're going to uh, spend our balance <laughs> with the present. It's in our hands, isn't it? Somebody said that one day. Uh, they call it the present because it's a gift. Present the gift. Well, it sure is. Every day we're here. But we're not here on our own. We uh, stopped yesterday and going to Shreveport in the rain. I mean, it poured down rain. We stopped at a little town about that prize and just down at the road where they had that bad wreck a couple weeks ago and killed those two ladies. And there was a gentleman in there that came over and started visiting with us. And I, I said something about the accident. He said, I was out there about 10 minutes after that. And those two ladies, he said, when they hit that truck, they got just on that truck there, they said they had just put the, the new tire on the front wheel that blew out uh, just uh, up the road from where the accident happened. I say up the road, probably 30, 40 miles over there uh, to Mansfield, Louisiana, to where that happened on Highway 84. But them folks, you think about it a moment. He said there wasn't anything left. He said when that car hit that truck, it exploded. So whether you believe in cremation or not, and I'm not one for cremation. I just don't like it. Out there, but these people got cremated. But in a moment, man, they were gone. Well, that happens all the time on airplane crashes, doesn't it? But you take an impact of a little small SUV hitting a, an 18 wheeler loaded down with whatever, it could even be empty for that matter. Don't stand a chance. So I don't know what they were planning for their, their immediate future future, but it didn't last long, did it? Yeah. This right, uh, that man was telling us that he was real close friends with, with one of the girl's daddies. He said he was out in Pecos when it happened. said he was glad that he went there on the scene. said he couldn't handle what you had to see. You think about your kid, all of a sudden, whew, melted. What it amounts to God make us in his image for? When you were born to your parents, you were either born male or female. Right? And the world began to mold you. In verse 3 it says we had our conversation in the past, times past. 
And you begin to make choices for yourself. We heard Brother Enrique say, Sunday school teaching uh, Sunday morning, he said when he was about eight, he began to make choices for himself. And you do what you do, do about that age. Now, but when God saved you, he had a purpose. In verse 10, down at the bottom page, tells us what that purpose is. For we his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good work. We are his workmanship. When we're born again, we begin to mold that which is God's. One step at a time. How many people ever get past that first step? But it's one step at a time. He gives us power that surpasses the nitrogen bone. Now, don't you, don't you hear that again? God gives us power that surpasses the nitrogen bone. Bob can only destroy it. Look at your last two verses on your page. 1 John 4. Ye are of God, little children. Ye overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And folk catch that power, love surpasses everything. For love is God. The source of us is the Spirit from God. God's name will form only that which we let Him. And the scripture says that. Paul quoted, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And we are to spread the love that, to a people that walking in darkness. When Brother uh, Enrique and Brother James over here and uh, Brother Renee went Sunday three of them knocking on doors, they were doing what we all need to be doing. Uh, spreading the love to a people that's walking in darkness. Sad, but that's what's happened. That's why God made us and saved us. And he call, he's called us as a church to build up his kingdom. Remember when he was on earth, he said, I'm the light of the world, right? He said that over and over again, I'm the light of the world. But then when he was about ready to leave, he said, ye are the light of the world. Now, we're like the sun and the moon. He is the sun, S-O-N, and Malachi said he's the S-U-N of righteousness. The son of, but he's the sun. And we know what they say. The moon doesn't have any light. It's all the light that's reflected from the sun. But we're like the moon. We're in a dark period. And only the light that we let shine on us can the world see. I said let's make the most of what God's invested in us. Let's make the most of that. We can't fight the past. We can't live in it. We haven't got to the future yet, so we can't we can't be future tense, can we? But we can take care of October the 17th, 2018. Can't do anything about the 16th. If you muddied that up yesterday, it's still muddy. <laughs> 